In Civil 3D 2013, Autodesk introduced pressure networks. Included in Civil 3D is a large, out-of-the-box catalog of pipes, appurtenances, and fittings in a variety of materials and sizes. These intelligent 3D objects help enable you to create and document detailed pressure network models. A pressure network can be displayed in any view, such as the plan, as shown here, in the profile, as shown here, with its own unique alignment, as well as in the cross-section view. In Civil 3D, there are many settings and styles related to pressure networks, just like all other Civil 3D objects. If we go to the Settings tab, you will notice that there are many categories for the different pressure network settings. Under the Pressure Network collection, you'll notice very similar to the Pipe Network collection, you have the Parts list. As you can see here, you can define multiple parts lists, which do come from a part catalog, that allow you to narrow down the different types of parts that you want in your parts list, as well as the different bends and angles that you can apply to those networks. You'll also notice that there is a pressure pipe category to define how the pressure pipes will display, as well as the labels or tables. There's additional fittings and appurtenances that will help you define how those objects should display within the Civil 3D environment. To define the location of the parts catalog, go to the Home tab, Create Design Panel, and in the More Tools option, you'll notice there's a tool for Set Pressure Network Catalog. In there, you can choose from the three available pressure network catalogs to create the parts list you need per your design. This concludes this video discussing an overview of pressure networks. To configure pressure networks, most of the configuration is done in the Settings tab. However, before we configure a pressure network, all the pipes and fittings and so on, let's go ahead and change the actual catalog used to define the network catalog. Go to the Create Design panel on the Home tab, More Tools option, and then click on Set Pressure Network Catalog. Let's say you want to use the Mechanical Catalog. Notice over here if you have any predefined catalogs, or if you get a catalog from another vendor, you can actually browse to it with this button here. We'll click OK, and we're ready to go. In the Settings tab, the first thing you'd want to do is you want to define your pressure pipe styles, your fitting styles, and your appurtenance styles. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of these just to see what's going on. I'll double click this double line ductile. The purpose of the pressure pipe style is to tell Civil 3D how it should display the object in the plan and the profile. You'll notice the options available, as well as in the display tab, what layer you can tell the object to go on in the plan, model, profile, and section views. You also have additional label styles that you can use to tell Civil 3D how you want the objects to be labeled. There's additional table styles for creating tables. For the fitting, you also have fitting styles as well that basically tell AutoCAD, again, how to display it in the plan view, the section view, and what layers the object should go on. Of course, there are label styles defined specifically for the fittings and table styles as well. For the appurtenances, it's the same thing as well. You define specific styles that tell Civil 3D exactly how you want to display in the plan section view. As you can see, you can define by a center line, a block, or how it actually is defined in the catalog, how you want to display in the section view, and of course, what layer those objects should go on in the plan, model, profile, and section views. Once these all are set up, then you are ready to create a pressure network. The reason you set these up first is that the parts list for the pressure network will actually reference those styles. So it's best to set them up first. Let's go ahead and create a new one. We'll right click on parts list and say new, and we'll call this one ductile iron. We'll first navigate to the pressure pipes tab. And the way that this works within this dialog box is you simply right click at the different collections. We'll right click on new parts list and select add material. Notice how we only have ductile iron, so we'll toggle that on and click OK. You can then expand this and then right click on here and add different sizes for the pressure pipes. Let's go ahead and click on that. You can pick any of the different sizes that you want by simply picking them down here, or you can actually select Add All Sizes as a little tip here, click OK, and then as you expand this, you'll notice that you can actually remove whichever ones are not in your parts list by simply right clicking and selecting Delete. Also notice that you can click once in here and you can actually then rename it and this will be the name that's used for the pressure pipe. And so on. Notice the style here that you can define for each of the different pipes. If you click on the one above here, 
this one will actually allow you to change all of them. All right. Notice the pay item functionality. This is a fantastic feature of AutoCAD Civil 3D. This allows you to actually define a pay item and you can automate quantities after you place your pressure network. We'll go to the fittings tab. Again, right click on the node, click add type. And here are all the parts that you can add. You have cross pipes, elbows, caps, tees, couplings, a plug, and reducer. We'll select all of them and click OK. As you expand this, you will notice that you can right click and select add size. And again, you can add all sizes and remove them or you can select individual sizes that you want to add in there. After that's done, you can then remove the sizes that you don't need. Again, simply right click on the category, choose add size, and add the appropriate sizes as you need them. For the appurtenances, it's the same thing. Click Add Type. And if the Pressured Network Catalog supports the appurtenances, they will be listed here. In this case, it does not, so we'll go ahead and click OK. Once you're all done, click OK, and you will have your parts list created, ready to be used, creating pressure networks. One thing also to remember is the feature and command settings specific to pressure network objects. Again, right click on each of the different categories, you can see the different pressure pipe network settings. As you can see, you can find default styles, as well as the default name format for pipes, and the profile label placement as well. Again, depending on which one you select or right click on, you'll be able to edit that specific feature settings as this is standard for all Civil 3D objects. Don't forget the command settings. So if you expand the pressure network and go to commands, you will see all the different command settings that you can define default settings within the commands. This concludes this video discussing configuring pressure networks. Civil 3D provides tools to creating pressure networks from existing AutoCAD objects. Let's go ahead and examine this functionality. I'm going to zoom into my drawing, and you'll notice we have this pie line with a width. It's on layer zero, and we're going to make this a pressure network object. This is an existing pressure network object they want to basically bring in so we can tie in eventually to our proposed waterline. To create a pressure network from an object, go to the Create Design panel on the Home tab, Pipe Network dropdown, and select Create Pressure Network from Object. Again, look at the command line when you don't know what to do. It asks you to select an object. Also notice the option to select an XREF. This is fantastic if you have your data in an existing DWG file. We'll go ahead and select this existing object. Notice how it shows you the direction that it wants to create the network in. You can reverse it by selecting Reverse. In this case, we're all set. Let's go ahead and click OK. You are then prompted for the name of the network, as well as all the default settings that you would normally expect to have to set up when you create a Civil 3D object. We want to use the Network Parts list. We want to select 10 inch, 250 PSI. Click on the layers to make sure and verify that these are the layers that you'd want your pipe network parts to go on. In the plan, in the profile, and the section view. You can change this afterwards if you want to, but it's always a good idea to do this right off the bat. Click OK. Define the surface that you want this to come off of. In this case, we have the finished ground, which is the combined road and existing ground surfaces. An alignment if you want to have station and offset labels, so you would select that. The most important thing to note is the depth of cover. If you did happen to have a 3D polyline, you could select Use Vertex Elevations, and you could define what that elevation pertains to with the existing pipe network object. In this case, we want a depth of cover of 5 feet, and we'll toggle on Erase Existing Entity, and we'll go ahead and click OK here. As you can see, our pipe network object is created. Let's go ahead and view it in 3D. I'll select one of the pipes, as well as the elbows, and we'll right-click, select Similar, right-click, Object Viewer. We'll go ahead and change our style to a shaded type style. And as you can see, this is a true 3D object. This is what makes using this functionality fantastic, is that it actually generates true 3D parametric models. Now that we're done with that, let's say we want to actually view this in a profile view. Civil 3D provides tools to do this. We'll go to the Alignment dropdown, and we'll go to Create Alignment from Pressure Network. Again, look at the command line window to see what it's asking you. It's asking you for the first pressure network part, and we'll go ahead and select this part here. And then we'll pan to the last network part. Note that you can actually select somewhere in the middle if that's all that you want to see for your pressure network. 
In this case, we want to see the whole thing. So we'll go ahead and select it at the last pipe right there. And then we'll press enter. And then you're prompted to define the default settings for the alignment here. We'll go with the default name, which is alignment, and then the pressure pipe network name. Stationing is fine. As far as the style, we'll just use basic. As far as labels go, we'll say no labels because we don't want to see the labels. And make sure you have on create profile and profile view in here. Click OK. Notice how you are now prompted to create a profile from the surface first. In this case, we want finished ground. We'll go ahead and click add. And then we'll go ahead and click on draw and profile view. Then select the appropriate profile view style. In this case, we want no grid pipe network. Again, you can keep clicking next here to go through the different options of creating a profile view. Make sure that you have labels set to no labels in the profile display options section. And for style here, we'll go ahead and select a basic profile. Click OK, click Next, and notice how you can toggle on the different parts of the pressure network. We'll go ahead and click on Create Profile View, and we'll just put this profile view somewhere over here, and here is our pressure network along with the finished grade surface displaying nicely. As you can see, Civil 3D creates a very easy way to create pressure networks from objects. This concludes this video discussing creating a pressure network from objects. Civil 3D provides tools to creating pressure networks by laying them out with pressure network tools. Let's go ahead and examine how to do this based on some circles that I have predefined for us in the drawing. Note, you can also use station offsets that may be provided to you by the design engineer using the apostrophe SO or transparent station offset command. Let's go ahead and zoom in to our beginning of our project here. And we'll go ahead and freeze a few of the layers within the area that we will be locating the network to avoid any kind of confusion. I'll use the layer freeze command and I'll freeze my quarter model and we'll freeze the station offset alignments as well as the other offset graphics. As you can see the circles here, we're gonna use these as a way to go through the motions of using the tools to create the pressure network. The create pressure network by layout tool is located in the home tab, create design panel, and then we have the pipe network dropdown and we have the pressure network creation tools. Going from the top to the bottom, Let's go ahead and give it a name here. We'll call this one Proposed Waterline. Make sure to pick the correct parts list. Again, look at your layers to make sure that you have the correct layers defined to them. Note, of course, the styles will also define the subcomponents for those layers as well. The surface that we want to select is the finished ground, which is the combination of all the existing ground, as well as the proposed roadway that we have created. The alignment that will be used for station offset labels is Bypass 1. And for now, we'll leave the pipe labels off just to avoid any kind of congestion within our drawing area. We'll go ahead and click OK. And notice how the ribbon tab becomes a contextual sensitive ribbon tab, allowing us to select the different tools to lay out pressure networks. Note that you can still change any of the settings you previously defined. Let's go ahead and change our cover to five feet as per our design. Note that you can select the size of the pipe right here. You can do pipes and bends or pipes only. You can also change the fittings that will be applied to them. For now, let's go ahead and just pick the 10 inch elbow. If you have any appurtenances that we want to use, we will select those here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all my O snaps by clicking clear all, and let's just toggle on the center O snap so we can just simply go through the tools and using the center snap of the circles provided. Note the command line window for the different command line options. We can actually define elevation right now. In this case, we're gonna use the finish ground, so we'll simply snap to the circles. We'll go ahead and snap the first one there. Notice how we are then provided the opportunity to select the next circle. But now watch what happens when I snap to this circle. What's great about the layout tools is that they are actually reading constraints defined in the parts list, which constrain how the bends within the pressure network can be applied. So this is actually reading that parts list that says you can do 45 degrees, 11.25 degrees, zero, and 90. That was defined in the parts list by us. We'll just go ahead and snap to the center of these circles here. And notice that this great compass just comes up every single time, which allows you to lock in that specific angle per the design of the utilities. Of course, you can also type in the length, as you can see here in the dynamic input. Right now it says 275.66. You could, of course, type in a length if you know the exact length. We'll go ahead and just snap to this circle here, and we'll keep snapping. But at this point, let's go ahead and look at the command line window. You have the option to do straight pressure pipes as we are doing now, or you can actually pick curve. 
Now, although it doesn't tell you in the command line window, it's actually asking for the second point of the curve. So I'll go ahead and click over here. And as you can see, I now am in the curve and I can actually pick a point. So I'll go ahead and select the center over here. And let's go ahead and just click on the straight part to go back to the straight option. And we'll go ahead and pick the next set of circles here just to finish our pipe network. Again, that's really cool. Again, it's locking the constraints here and you can do curved sections as well, as long as that's okay per your design. So we'll just go ahead and snap to this last point here. And I'm just gonna put a little leg out here that will eventually tie into existing pipeline here as we need to. Press escape and there's the end of our command. Let's go look in the prospector tab to see where these are actually located. In the pressure networks category, all those fittings and pressure pipes and so on are located actually in the collection of the proposed waterline pressure network. You can go ahead and select on here. You have the ability to view them individually, or you can also, of course, edit them here as well. But this is where they actually live in the prospector tab of the tool space window. And of course, again, the great thing about all this functionality is it's all civil 3D objects, all 3D models and so on. If we take this into the object viewer, of course, you can see the beauty of the working environment is that you actually are getting true 3D objects where you can actually eventually view them in cross-section or profile view and so on. This concludes this video discussing laying out a pressure network.